Let me read to you a passage from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 11, verses 14 to 23. It's the Gospel for Thursday of the third week of Lent. St. Luke writes, Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. And when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts, and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come among you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armour on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. That is from Luke chapter 11 verses 14 to 23. What does it suggest to us? Well, one of the most powerful ideas that suddenly appeared in mid-19th century England was that which had been germinating in the mind of Karl Marx and published in his book Das Kapital in 1848. It led to the disasters of communism in the following century and still has something of a following. One still sees devotees manning their Marxist stalls at some of our Australian universities. Marx drew on aspects of the thought of his fellow German, Hegel. Hegel understood reality in terms of an ultimate conflict between what we might call the, the thesis and the antithesis, leading to a synthesis which is again negated, and so the struggle goes on and on. Endemic conflict is at the root of the universe. Marx translated this into a class struggle which he saw as resolved in the final triumph of the proletariat in a classless society. Now all of this can be dismissed as a futile waste of time and typical of the convolutions of much of German philosophy of the Enlightenment and its aftermath. But I mention it here to show that conflict and struggle has been seen in modern philosophical thought as a fundamental key to the world. Now, conflict and struggle is indeed a fundamental key to understanding life and the world. We know this because our Lord has revealed it to be so. But, in a sense, the too many of our German philosophical friends of the past sadly fail to appreciate. When God the Son became man, he revealed that there are two kingdoms in profound conflict. He also revealed that victory is assured for the one, and utter defeat is coming for the other. The conflict which lies at the heart of the universe is that between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. In our gospel today, 
which I read a moment ago, our Lord drives out a demon from a mute person, and his enemies among the crowds insinuated that he was able to do this because he was actually in collusion with Satan. The absurdity of this, even from a tactical point of view, was pointed out by our Lord. But a significant element in his reply is his revelation about what is ultimately going on. Our Lord describes his action against Satan as action against a kingdom. He says, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. So, Satan's is a kingdom. It is a kingdom that is being attacked by Christ, in whom is present another kingdom, the kingdom of God. Our Lord says, But if it is by the kingdom of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come among you. That the kingdom of God is far the stronger is also made clear. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armour on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. So then, every day, whether we are aware of it or not, we are in the midst of a cosmic struggle involving powers visible and invisible. And that struggle is between two armies in battle array. There are two great standards held aloft and flying. The one is the standard of Christ, the other the standard of Satan. Christ has entered the lists to save every soul, and Satan is determined to thwart this aim. Christ is the truth, Satan the father of lies. Christ is our life, Satan is a murderer from the beginning. Let us then take our stand with Christ and fight with him in the hidden and ordinary duties of everyday life, which, though hidden and ordinary, are filled with eternal significance and consequences. Our weapons are the weapons which Christ used, and our path is the path he chose to tread. That path is the path to Calvary, and its result is the resurrection and glory in heaven. That is the upshot of the struggle that is at the heart of the world, 